This is part 15 of my series on my Engage model railway project. Earlier parts provided an intro to the project and my background with railways and covered initial setup of the baseboard, selection and laying of track, various scenic items from Metcalf, Kestrel, Ratio and P&D Marsh kits and built from foam, etc. A review of my period LMS and LNER, rolling stock, installing and weathering a Cato motorized turntable, adding more sidings to the layout and some adjustments to the track involving customization of Cato Unitrack sections. A couple of recent parts showed some actual video of trains running on the layout. This part deals with adding an expan <laughs> expansion to the Cato motorized turntable, which I installed and weathered in part 8. I was quite happy with the way the Cato motorized turntable was working with the layout and allowing me to park multiple locomotives in sheds in the yard area and to turn locomotives to face whichever way was needed for the train I wanted to run. However, I only had five parking shed tracks. The turntable came with four straight access tracks and when I ordered the turntable I also ordered the curved extension set. I was disappointed to find that the curved extension set only came with two curved access tracks, even though it added an extra three-track ex connection piece. This seemed to me a poor marketing arrangement by Cato. The individual access tracks are not sold separately, nor are the three-track connection pieces or buffer track pieces. You can only buy them either as included with a turntable, or as a straight extension set, or a curved extension set. The straight extension set comes with three straight access tracks, but the curved extension set only comes with two curved access tracks, so buying the curved set you're always going to be one access track short. Anyway, I initially had five parking slash shed tracks since one of the four straights that came with the turntable needed to be used for access from the main line, so that left three straights plus the two curves for the from the extension set for parking or sheds. I felt that now it would be good to add another set of parking or shed tracks, and that there should be room to the right of the existing access tracks as seen in this picture. As is my habit, I tried things with a paper template first to see how the addition might fit. It looked as though it should be, I should be able to add another three-track shed if I just move the siding over a little bit, which shouldn't be too difficult to do. I was planning to buy a straight extension set in order to get the three tracks, even though it would really have been more convenient to have curved tracks, but then I would have been stuck missing one track. Here's another view with a template which was based on my existing set of three straights in place. I went ahead and ordered the straight turntable extension set and a couple more buffer tracks from Otter Valley Railroad in Tilsonburg, Ontario. I live in Ontario myself. Um, I ordered the new tracks to come by post. I could have got curbside pickup, but due to COVID, no access was allowed to the actual store at this point, and it didn't seem worth driving all the way down to Tilsonburg just to pick up uh, the order and save the eight bucks postage. Whilst I was waiting for the track to come, I worked on adapting a building to serve as an additional three-track shed. I had this building, which I had bought ready-built from a local seller on Kijiji. I guess it was originally intended as some sort of factory served by a rail line. I reckoned it could be made to serve as a three-track shed. This is the other end of the building as it originally was. I worked with some of the platform edging strips from the Metcalf brick platform card construction set. A nice thing about the Metcalf platform sets is that they include enough material to make even a very large platform or to use for some other purposes, as I determined to do here. Here I've taken the Metcalf brick strips intended to make the sides of platforms and glued them on the stiff glued on the stiff card backing provided to go with them. I thought I could use these to raise the building as was needed in order for the side parts to be high enough for locomotives to enter. Here's the building from the bottom. It had evidently been glued down to someone's layout at some point, so the first thing to do was to clean up the bottoms of the walls, which had grit and glue, etc. adhering to them. 
I also needed to do some re-gluing as I went along, as the building seemed to be showing a tendency to fall apart. I made brick strips to add to the bottom of the walls, with cutouts to provide neat joining in the corners. Then I glued on additional pieces of the Metcalf heavy grey card to bridge over onto the bottom of the plastic walls and support the extensions. I used the Metcalf uh, rocket glue to glue these on, which is what Metcalf sort of sell and recommend for their card kits. Here I've got the extension pieces glued to the two sides and you can see how the cutouts on the corners prepare for addition of the next pieces. And here I'm gluing on shorter pieces into the cutouts on the corners um, and along the short end walls. Now I've got a set of extensions onto three sides of the building. I don't think the effect looks too bad at all. It seems to me that I've seen buildings somewhat like this in the real world. However, even after the addition of these extensions, the building still wasn't really high enough to allow proper clearance for locomotives in the side sections. I tried it on the layout and it wasn't going to work. So I added another layer of extension pieces using the same technique. I also, of course, cut out one end of the building to allow entry for locos on three tracks. I did the cutting out of the plastic walls with a cutting disc on a Dremel tool, as this seemed much more workable than trying to cut with a knife or saw. Here's the building after a bit of touching up with paint and coloured markers, and still needing a little more. You can see the adapted building on the layout here, roughly where it was intended to go. It seemed that the siding really needed to be moved over a bit to allow enough room for the turntable extension. To do that, I made a custom lens straight, as discussed and shown in part 10 of this series, and substituted it for a Cato short straight. The custom straight is outlined in red in this picture. Here's another view showing the siding in its new position, now moved over about as far as it can sensibly go, given the position of the pillars for the gradient up to the viaduct. And now we move on to work after the order from Otter Valley came in the mail. Here I've laid the new straight extension tracks down in position so that I can draw round them with a pencil in order to cut out a recess in the board for them. Here's a close-up showing how they will fit relative to the turntable. I put them upside down as it was easier to draw round them this way. Now the tracks are removed, you can see my markings for the cutout, and yes, I did it a bit on the straight edge. I also needed to make a recess on the board for the buffer tracks, so I needed to draw around them as well. I found it easier to draw around them one at a time, as they're very light and move easily. I realised when first working with the turntable that you always need to have something opposite every access to the table that you have. Otherwise, locals will just run off the far side and derail if you don't stop them quickly enough, which is easy to do. Do. In my case, since due to space restrictions I'm putting all of my actual tracks on one side of the table, I need to put buffer tracks opposite to all of them on the far side. Now I remove the cover pieces where the new extensions are to go. These remove by just popping off the little cover in the middle and undoing the single screw retaining them. You can see the screws laying in the right side of the pit here. I figured they'd be safe there. You don't want to lose them, as Cato don't give you any spares, though I suppose you could match the screws in a push. The next step was to weather the pieces. Obviously, I needed them to match the rest of my installed turntable, which I had blended and toned down the colour, you know, so it would go into blend into my layout better. See part eight of this series. So back to the bench the pieces went. Uh, I've not put the little buffers on yet as they are fragile and break easily and it'll be easier to weather without them. I painted all of the pieces. I actually used Luftwaffe Grau Violette left over from my aero modelling as this was the colour that I had used for the rest of the turntable tracks having decided it was the best fit that I had. Painting between all the tracks and sleepers was a fairly fiddly and tedious job. It's not a disaster if there's a little bit of paint on some of the sleepers, but we do want to make sure that none is left on the tracks, of course. Now, whilst the paint was drying, I went to cut out the recesses in the board. Since my board was formed from layers of half-inch pink insulating foam, I just cut through the top layer and pried the pieces out. 
The brown lines here are the construction adhesive that was holding the layers together. Here I've done the same thing for the small recess for the buffer tracks. And since the half-inch recesses this produced were actually too deep, I cut pieces of dollar store foam to put in to raise things a little, as I did for the main turntable extension. Yeah, main turntable installation, I mean, when I first put the turntable in. Now I reassembled the painted tracks and checked them. I think I can live with the way they look. I added the little plastic buffer pieces to the buffer tracks. These just clip into place, so long as you don't break them. And now everything is put into place. The new extension connectors screwed into the turntable, the covers popped back over the screws and the tracks and the adapted shed in place. The tracks I had were all a bit too long for the shed building, so I used the customization process shown in part 10 of this series to shorten all of them. I put a buffer on the middle straight, which will just protrude through the back door of the shed. I didn't bother with buffers on the other two tracks, as I figured this would allow a little more space uh, on the tracks in the shed, and the shed itself should hopefully prevent locos going off the end. And here's the final result. Now I have parking for eight locos rather than just five. I did, of course, test the new tracks, and locos do run on them okay. That will be it for me as regards the turntable on this layout, I think, as there's really not space to do any more. I do, however, have plans to add other elements to the yard area in the form of a coaling tower and ash plants, such as were usually found in main LMS yards of the period. I've hardly got room in my little yard, of course, but I think I can probably work something out and that this will make a nice cosmetic addition in the future when I get the necessary bits.